Hello everyone, my name is Ming. I hope you are all doing fantastic. I'm doing very well. It's April. It's getting warm in Colorado. Flowers coming out. Maybe I should go out and take some photos. And maybe you should go out and take some photos. But if you decide to stay at home and watch my YouTube videos, I want to let you know I'm grateful. All right, you are not here listening to me talking about weather. Today, I'm going to talk about Capture One. Because today, Capture One released a new version 11.1. So Fuji X-H1 users will be happy about this because Fuji X-H1 is supported in this version. That is number one, the good news for Fuji X-H1 users. Number two, if you have been following my YouTube channel for a while, then you will know a couple of weeks ago, I published another video about uh, what features in Capture One that I like, and I am in the transition from Lightroom to Capture One. Then I realized at the point I published that video, I was working with Capture One Pro 10, and now Capture One is 11. So I upgraded it from Capture One 10 to 11.1, .1, and I found some amazing features like layers. If you are familiar with Photoshop, you are familiar with layers already. And the layers, I think, is a very flexible tool uh, that allows you to control how much of the effect that you want to show on your image from each layer. I think it's very cool. And almost every adjustment tool that you can find within Capture One Pro supports layers. I think that's also very cool. The third thing that I want to talk about is I am thinking about starting a series of videos talking about the tips and the tricks that I learned for Capture One. Because many people say Capture One has a steep learning curve. It's difficult to learn. But I think photography itself is a learning process. It's a continual learning process. Uh, Post-processing, photo editing, I think it's a continual learning process. You, you keep learning, you keep growing. So since a couple months ago, I started using Capture One. I, at first, I just want to try out the, the software because many people recommended that software to me. Then I realized that there's a lot of things that I need to learn. So the new series of videos, I just want to show you everything that I learned, every tips and tricks I learned for Capture One Pro. I hope to help you learn faster to help you learn quicker. So please stay tuned. I hope this series of videos can help those people who are thinking about switching to Capture One. Today, I'm going to show you one quick tip how I browse photos to improve efficiency. Now let's jump right into it. Now we are in Capture One 11. The first thing I did was to go to View tab and I like to place browser at the bottom, since that's what I am used to. And when I started the Capture One, the first thing I noticed is I wasn't used to the file browser. Basically, every single time I came here, I need to raise this browser, and then I select a photo that I want to work on. But then because this area becomes small, then I need to drag and pull the browser back like that so I can have a large area to display the image. So after I made some changes, for example, maybe let's say uh, highlight, contrast, saturation. Anyway, like after I changed the image, made some adjustments, I want to go to the next photo. Then I found I needed to make this browser bigger again and I find the next photo that I want to work with. For example, say this photo, then bring this browser window down again, and then I can have a large area to display the photo. Then I can zoom in to check focus, to work on little areas, and then zoom out, and then bring up the browser if I want to switch to another image. And then I just click on the image and then bring down this browser again and again. I found it's really inconvenient. So actually, I learned a trick to very, very quickly to uh, select the image. And then you have a uh, very big area to display your photo. Let me explain. Here is the trick. Go to Edit and go to Keyboard Shortcuts. I think one of the advantages of Capture One is allow you to change any keyboard shortcut. First, I will go to Cursor Tools and a Selection. And currently, I see V is used by Selection Tool. I want to make V available for a viewer window, so I want to set Selection to something else. 
uh, I want to set it to S since it starts with S. So uh, first, I want to create a new uh, keyboard because you cannot override the default. So click on create. Let's do main keyboard. Okay, so now I'm updating my keyboard. So I can select this and then press S, S, S. So basically I just set all these tools to shortcut S. And let me close this for a second. So now if I go to pen tool and I press S, it goes back to the selection tool. Now go back to keyboard shortcuts again and let's go to view and find show hide viewer. Currently it's set to control out view out control out plus V. I think it's not convenient to press. So I want to change this to V, which I just made available. It says V is used by delete. Okay. Go to cursor tools again, selection. Uh, for some reason it's, it's still V. Let's change it to S. Okay, let's go back to view. Show hide the viewer is V. That looks good. Close. So now whenever, whenever I press V, it's going to close the viewer and bring up the browser. I think it's very convenient because first time when I just come in here, I can just select a photo and then I double click. It. Then brings up the viewer and then I can work on this photo. I can zoom in. If I go to pen tool, then, then I can zoom in 100%. I can make some changes here. And if I decided to, if I want to move on to the next photo, then I can just press V to close the viewer and then brings up the file browser. Then I can go to the next photo. So say if I want to work on this photo now, then I just double click. It brings up the viewer again. And I have a large area to display this photo and to work with this photo. After I'm done with this photo, I want to move on to the next photo. Just press V again, and then brings up the browser, and then I can just uh, go to another photo. Another tool that I think is very useful is this loop tool. If you right click on it, you can set loop size to small, medium, or large, or you can set loop zoom to 25, 50, and if 100. Personally, I like to set it to 100%. So basically, you can just choose this loop tool and then come in, in file browser and then you can just uh, left click on any photo and it opens up a circle and shows you 100% scale of that detail area. So you can check focus even before you double click the, the photo and bring this up in viewer. I think that's pretty cool. It allows you to quickly check focus quickly check at 100% scale for multiple photos. You can do that very quickly. So for example, if I checked multiple photos and I decided to work on one of those, maybe this one. So I think maybe the details looks good on this photo. I want to make further adjustments to this photo then just double click on this and then brings up the viewer window then I have a large area to work with. I think it's pretty cool. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tip and I find it useful. If you want to try out Capture One, you can download the software from Face One website and it gives you a 30 day free trial. Basically, it gives you full control for free for 30 days. After 30 days free trial, if you want to continue to use the software, then you need to purchase a license. So if you need to purchase a license or if you want to upgrade from a lower version to Capture One 11.1, .1, I have a coupon code for you that can save you 10% of the total cost. On the checkout page, if you enter A and B C A I, and that will save you 10%. All right guys, that's it. I hope you find this video interesting, useful, helpful. If you like it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next time. Bye.